Damon Bungard from Orion Kennels, and welcome to the business end of our factory here in Sparta, Tennessee. This is our one of our shipping bays, and the reason we're here today is for some fun with physics and some lab testing of the kennels. We get a lot of questions on, are the kennels crash rated? So I want to talk a little bit about that and show you some of the survivability testing that we've done and believe in for the kennels themselves. So crash ratings for kennels. Well, there's a lot of them out there, but the reality is none of them were really developed for kennels. They're all based around tests developed for child seats. That's the only internationally recognized standard are some, are some tests for child safety seats. And roughly they simulate a 30 mile per hour impact or crash on a, on a sled test, on a shock test. Now in our case, we can't get to 30 feet, but we, we can get to 20, which generates around 25 miles per hour when a kennel that's dropped comes to tension. So what we have is we're gonna have some carabiners and some systems rigged up and dropping some kennels in various configurations with various loads inside showing how our system works to absorb shock and dissipate energy. Ultimately, when it comes to survivability for any living tissue, it's not so much how strong what's holding it is, it's how long does it take for that living tissue to come to a stop. That's why you'll see a lot of systems that are designed to absorb energy and extend time, or you see stuntmen roll. It's not so much that they're strong, it's that they're extending the time for their tissues to come to a stop because you can't stop a heart from moving in a chest cavity, you can't stop a brain from moving in a skull. So what we have is a system of our kennels that's designed to flex and it's designed to absorb shock and designed to dissipate energy, but most importantly designed to extend the time it takes for something to come to a stop. So we're gonna have them anchored with some carabiners and climbing hardware, just like I use mine anchored in my, in my truck. So you anchor these to the child seat latch, the retainer systems, and that's a solid anchor point in vehicles. And it gives you something for, <clears throat> to hold the kennel in place, not bounce around in a vehicle, not land in somebody's lap, not hit somebody in the back of the head, but it also then engages the rope anchors and lets the system do what it's meant to do to help keep you safe and help keep your dog safe. All right, so we're about ready to do our drop. We have a weight loaded inside. And what we have here is, kind of how it'd be configured loaded in the back seat of your car. So you can see how the rope handles are right now as rope handles, and we just have carabiners clipped to each one. Now these would be going to anchors in your car, like child seat, the latch retainer bars. In this case, they're just going to our webbing. So it's gonna come down, boom, hit the impact. It'll be going 30 miles per hour when it comes to tension, as you see here. And then we'll see how the overall system of the kennel acts together to absorb shock and extend that time to come to a stop. Okay, so there you saw it. Fall, 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 came to tension. And you can see how the overall system absorbed shock, but didn't fail. And you can see how it collapsed the middle rope handle, extended these two, and overall the system deflected a little. There's still, so door is totally fine, completely intact. There's our weight inside, good dog. All right, now here we just did the, the face down test. So we still have 35 pounds. This is the AD2, there's still 35 pounds in there and dropped it now straight onto its face. So a lot of that force is going into the door. Questions about you know, how, how well do the buckles hold up and how does the overall system work? So this is a good example now. You can see all of the side handles have collapsed. So they've, they've shrunk down, they've extended back here so we have, we have friction in each of these absorbing force and dissipating energy, but also allowing movement, allowing that motion that's so critical. And then the, the buckles are again, US made, 350 tensile pounds of strength each. And this, we'll see how our, our test dummy dog is, but I'm just gonna pop them. So there's the test dummy. And he's okay. Door's still fine, buckle's still fine, everything stayed contained. All right, so now we're moving up. This is the next size up. This is the AD3, and this is recommended for dogs 50 to 75 pounds, roughly. So we're gonna load it with 85 pounds. This is 50 pounds of rock salt, and another 35 pounds of the playground sand. So, there's 50. Good boy. There's our original bag now. On another 35. Ugh. It's heavier. 
than any dog I've ever lifted. So, all right, we'll close it up. Let's see what happens here. 85 pounds is even 10 more than we recommend um, for, the, for the large. So, let's check inside. See the door is fine. Here's our 35 pound weight, there's our 50 pound weight. So, they're good. The overall integrity of the shell is still very intact. You can see how the rope system once again worked and did its job. It collapsed the rope handles along the side. The middle, it pulled tight, pulled tension. There's some slight deformation of the plastic here. There's some slight deformation of the plastic here. That's all good, that's what you want. This is an overall shock absorbing, energy dissipating system. So not only do you have the climbing rope have its own stretch, but the, the energy it takes to deform the plastic here and here, dissipate that friction, that's all energy not being imparted onto the dog and his internal organs and its, its body. So this is, a, this is climbing rope. This is designed to stretch and absorb shock by following rock climbers. The same overall system is in this kennel, but we designed it so that things external can fail, they're made to fail. They're made to tear, they're made to deform because they don't affect the overall integrity of the kennel. This was 85 pounds face down against the door. So here, we'll check the door. Now you can see it. All right, so let's, let's let our dogs out. You guys in there? They're stuck against the door. Come on, guys. Oh, there they are. All right, there you can see all. Buckle's fine, door's okay. Now, the door system was designed to move. As that kennel body flexes, the door can move too. And that ability to move is part of that overall shock absorbing ability. So here you can see, again, it's the movement. We have movement of the rope handles along the sides. They all collapsed. All this tension, all this stretch, went into that full length of that rope all the way around on one side. Same thing on the other. The door was able to flex, but stay intact. Buckles all held, stayed intact. And the overall kennel body is fully intact. So that is a bunch of different drop tests now. We did a 35, or an AD2 with 35 pounds in at multiple angles, AD3 with even more than a recommended weight in it for multiple angles, and everything worked just like it's supposed to work. That is physics and engineering at work, and that is a well-designed product, and you can find information on it on the website. Feel free to reach out, contact us, but there you go. There's a bunch of survivability testing in our warehouse right here, Jackson Kayak, Orion Coolers, Orion Kennels in Sparta, Tennessee. We trust it, so should you.